So hi, everyone, and thank you for joining us at our last session of the day. We've had an amazing, amazing audience participation so far, and um, it's been a pleasure to host this conference for all of you. I'm going to start with some brief introductions. My name is Tally. I work with GDA Capital and NFT Basel in the event planning section. Um, sections and I will be moderating today's panel. So why don't we just go clockwise? I would love to hear from all of you guys, starting with Adoni, if you wanna introduce yourself, talk about some of your experience in the space and some of the current projects that you're working on. Mm -hmm. So hi everyone, my name is Adonis. I'm the co-founder of Renovi, which is the first NFT marketplace for architects and 3D designers. We're a niche NFT marketplace and we want to empower all the architects to help built an open and interoperable metaverse. At the same time, I'm the co-founder of Renovi Metaverse Studios. So we design our own structures, just like this one, uh, for the metaverse um, and anything in between. So at the, at the time, our biggest contribution to the metaverse is the next top metaverse built competition that we're having uh, for all the architects and designers that we want to try to bring them all together, educate them on what the metaverse is, and at the same time, reward them with amazing presence from us and uh, all the metaverse platforms uh, in order to build the great metaverse. And over to you. Amazing. Thank you so much. So why don't we go with Sarah? Can you please introduce yourself and uh, explain a little bit about what you've been up to in the space? Sure, thanks. Um, my name is Sarah and I am the co-founder of QGlobe. And what QGlobe does is it's an incubator and an accelerator and part VC for some of the strongest metaverse game companies and projects out there. And we release about one to two projects per month last month being More Than Gamers, and this month being Mighty Hercules, two exciting metaverse game projects. QGlobe is an IGO platform, and that stands for Initial Game Offering. So super fun space to be in, and I've been in this space for a long time uh, from Silicon Valley. Amazing, amazing. And uh, Joel, how about yourself? Yeah, I um, have been interested in game design and programming for my whole life. That's what got me into computers. And uh, I joined Ethereum on basically day one. And depending on how you know me, people know me either as the founding architect of MetaMask or founding the academic field of crypto economics or doing the first smart contract education um, channels. But, you know, I've been around in the space for a while. Um, and uh, tend to sometimes take on the more academic projects, but that uh, led me into thinking about metaverses and kind of a universal coordinate system for metaverses. And I started designing my own language um, that basically generates metaverses. Uh, and then I we got a whole got a whole team building it, and it just looks absolutely stunning. And so we've had a lot of adoption from uh, a lot of different parties, both for building with this language and then kind of building metaverses in this kind of framework. Um, so it's coming along very nicely. That project is called the Meta Metaverse. So well. That's amazing. And I, it's such an honor to have such a diverse range of panelists with all of your different experiences uh, within the tech and the blockchain space. I mean, you guys are really at the forefront of building an industry and building something that has never been done before in each of your own respective ways. So I guess with that, my question to all of you guys, to whoever wants to take it away, would be, what does it mean to design a civilization? Because that is essentially what we are doing over here. So I'll, I'll take it. Let's go clockwise again. Why not? Um, designing a civilization. Um, that's a really big question and it has a lot of uh, intricacies, but I'll, I'll take it from what I know with Renovi and what I know from the architectural perspective and what we bring into the metaverse. Um, what I want to see and what I really like to see is um, what we can create in the metaverse, what, what we can imagine, what we can see within the metaverse, how we can interact with others, how that interaction is really enhanced 
from what we have right now. For example, right now I'm speaking in a Zoom meeting environment. I want to see something different. I want to see, I want to be able to meet my friends, although they are in other countries. I want to be able to, you know, um, have deeper relationships and not a relationship with my computer screen. And that's what the metaverse means for me. And of course, the the angle that I bring in and the angle that Renovi brings in is in order to have that interaction, you need to have a really cool, fresh, amazing space in which you interact with it. Okay, just like in real life, the space which you interact with can actually influence your mood. I think that the space in which you interact in within this digital space, this metaverse, uh, is going to influence how you feel about the platform, but also how you feel about interacting with it. So I see just like iPhone, for example, at the beginning made that experience a bit more fun, a bit more funky. We want to bring that, make the metaverse that kind of an experience, a bit more fun to be in. That's what I see from the architectural side of things into the metaverse. Agreed completely. Sarah, Joel, do you have anything to maybe add on to that? Yeah. Otherwise, uh, I, oh, Sarah, take it away. Well, I would just love to yeah talk about the civilizational stuff. I think it's so interesting because not only do you have like the current generation of people growing up, you know, some of them Web3 native, right? So they mm -hmm. don't even use banks or know what a bank is because why would you use a bank, you know? Um, and then you have, you know, the, the actual civilizations that are being created inside of these metaverse games. You know, we have some in our kind of language being generated. I'm sure Sarah has some on her platform as well. And in some ways, it's, it's kind of sometimes hard to know the difference, especially if you believe in some version of like the simulation hypothesis or something like that, you know, what really constitutes kind of a civilization. And I think um, we're kind of seeing this interesting moment in, you know, planetary history where we've gone from, you know, tribes that are location-based, you know, um, and ethnicity-based sometimes, um, to tribes that are, like, based on, like, a common idea, you know, so to speak, of what the way that they want the world to evolve or things like that. And it's just, you know, with DAOs these days, it's super easy to join things that are, you know, represent you, but they're kind of immediately global in scope. So I think it's going to pretty significantly shift how people even just shape their identity and um, allow a lot of very interesting things to happen. Yeah, yeah, agreed. Sarah, do you have anything else that you'd like to add on to that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's really about um, each community and each one of these uh, governing and, and law-abiding citizens of each uh, metaverse is an opportunity to uh, follow the vision of the architect of each one. So what we're seeing um, for our projects, you know, for example, uh, More Than Gamers is really focused on mental health and well-being for each one of the citizens. And uh, Mighty Hercules is, they're all about mastermind and um, achieving uh, problem solving for the larger NFT games community, but also the art community because it's led by the architect Emre Yosefi, who is a fine artist. He's pretty well known for collaborations with Jeff Koons and a uh, very famous uh, contemporary artist across the Middle East and Europe. And so what he's all about is uh, sort of this vision of like half human, half God, and that we all have a human side in us, which gives us imperfection, because we are mortals. Um, but then when you step into the mighty Hercules metaverse, it's a Roman Colosseum, antiquities based metaverse, and the society is all about supporting one another as they mastermind achieving their dreams through goals. And this really came about as Emery, you know, struggled with his own internal imperfections, trying to become the greatest artist he can be. So it's really also for fine art collectors. And um, you're seeing these kinds of common guild purposes come about across all of the community members. So we think of each one of the communities as a guild that shares a common purpose and a mission, and they're all in it together. Yeah, that's honestly a really interesting point about community because essentially when, you know, designing or building a civilization, 
the purpose of that is really to just build the infrastructure to facilitate communities and interactions and connecting people who may not have otherwise been connected before. And we have the means to do so now because of social media, Web2 having enabled that, and then Web3 being the further progression of that. So how do you guys see Web3 being a further extension of that? And maybe let's dive into some of the potential and possibility that maybe hasn't been explored yet in an, you know, in an industry that's still in its infancy. Um, so what, what do you guys maybe hope to see coming out of that as well? Hmm. Really good question. What I hope to see out of Web3 in a way, oof, so, many, so many ideas that are sparking in my mind right now. Um, I, I guess what I hope to see is like, uh, for me, Web3, I always put it metaverse, same thing for me, but I want to see the metaverse all around me. I want to see the metaverse in the sense that not only in virtual reality, but in AR as well. I want to see it happening all the time. I want to be connected all the time with this guilt, like you've said, uh, Sarah, as well. It's like, I want to be connected to my tribe wherever I am, whatever I do. Uh, so uh, this is what I'm really interested to see in the future. That doesn't exist yet, but is that full-blown connection that you can have is like, and you have it to a certain extent with your phone when you're looking down, but that, that's, not, that's not the metaverse experience. The metaverse experience is what you can have with AR glasses, what you can have with uh, VR glasses, and that interaction where you can have the world and then uh, another world on top of it, uh, for example, with AR, and then you come home and then you put your VR and in, you're immediately in your own, in a way, civilization over there, your own guilt. So that's what I'm trying to get out of Web3 and the metaverse, that connection that you need to have with your own tribe, your own kind of people. Um, and, and I want to see what we can make out of it. And I want to see if uh, actually you can make it like the movies at some point. I don't know, maybe it's a dream, but uh, I'm not saying about the dystopian movies, but I'm saying that the, that futuristic version where you can have, um, for example, you know, all the information always with you, you see somebody, you know the information about them, um, or you're in your VR and you can, can collaborate full time all the time. So that's what Web3 means for me. It's like we have Web1, which is was, I don't know, a white screen with a bit black text. And that was the first internet, for example. Then you had the communications with Facebook and MySpace and all that. And I wanna see Web3 a more involved, more immersed version of the internet. That's what it means to me. Amazing. And Adonis, I actually remember something that you said at our previous conference that stuck out to me. That was an interesting bit of information you shared that the metaverse is actually not a new concept, although mm -hmm. it is a relatively new term that um, we've been seeing around the internet and around the blockchain and Web3 spaces. But the metaverse has existed for a really long time. And it really just, I mean, if you would like to expand upon that concept as well, since it was your point, but it it's really just, you know, the digital representation of our current existing lives and the communities that we've already been partaking in whether it be Facebook or Instagram or any of these other platforms. And Joel and Sarah, if you have any additional pointers you'd like to throw in on that commentary as well, feel free to uh, to jump in. That's a really good point. I'll, I'll lead it because I like that comment. And, and it's uh, so the, the metaverse actually, uh, well, at least the word is 29 years old. OK, because I'm 29. Snow Crush was written in 1992. So that's why I know the maths, not because of any other reason. So uh, uh, the term metaverse was uh, probably made famous in the Snow Crush uh, book uh, that gave the idea of what the metaverse is. And since then, a lot of projects have actually tried to be the metaverse and they've done a really good job with it. I mean, I'm thinking second life in my mind right now, probably what they didn't have then was NFTs was the uh, the cryptocurrency, the cryptos, that economy, probably all the technology coming together to form a better version of the metaverse that can actually formulate what we have up to now and what it could be. So it's not a new concept. It's just we can actually embrace it even more. And now you can own part of the metaverse, which I think it gives it more value 
than what it had before. Uh, but yeah, and, and it can be so much more in the future. I would like to hear though from you guys, Joel, Sarah, what you think as well. Well, you know, to go with my you know background image here, mm -hmm. I think it, one of the things I really hope um, is that we can, you know, kind of plot a way to being a sort of star-faring civilization and in our um, uh, game, you know, kind of context in the meta metaverse, you explore different metaverses and you get to see, you know, what um, artifacts ancient aliens have left behind and then reconstruct them to like make um, different type of space technology that, you know, furthers your search. Um, so I, I think that there's a way, you know, in which a lot of these um, future civilizational paradigms can be introduced first in the context of kind of games and uh, allow people to kind of build on top of them. Um, and actually greatly accelerate, you know, uh, IP and, um, and technology sharing. Like if you look at sort of the IP um, industry as a whole, you know, for whether it's, you know, experiments that are done in laboratories or all the way down to kind of patents, you know, it still has the, much like corporations, you know, it has the kind of semblance of something that was designed 70, 100 years ago or whatever. And if we're able to kind of match, you know, the innovation of kind of legal frameworks with the innovation of kind of web three things, I think there's a good chance that we'll really be able to dramatically speed up the, the innovation that happens in those areas. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Thank you, Sarah. Any, any other thoughts? Sure. Yeah, thanks. Uh, web three is super exciting because of the potential for this new interface that has to do with getting paid. And in the past, you know, centralized entities have been the ones getting paid, but now in the future, it's the citizens who partake and contribute who get paid and it's decentralized. So it's not going to become uh, the same situation we're seeing in web one or web two. And the exciting part that uh, we're seeing with Q Globe is all the creativity that's coming out of it, the art, uh, the amazing graphics, the CGI, um, this renaissance that we're having. And it's a, it's a digital renaissance. And it's super fun to be a part of, um, you know, just being able to play games and earn tokens, um, participate and contribute, take on a role and contribute to this civilization is something that gives people great purpose. And it might be a trend right now, but I don't think that, you know, it's healthy to live your whole life uh, in the metaverse. It's, it's good to have some, some uh, connections that way that become real connections in the real world. And that's really what we're seeing are, you know, events coming out of it uh, and those real world connections. Like for example, uh, Emery Yusefi, uh, he, he got a condo at the 11 Hotel in Miami and he's given it away to the NFT access pass, which is like a ticket into his metaverse, but it also becomes a ticket to have a lifetime pass to access and use the condo. And the condo comes with yacht parties and nightclub experiences. So there's really fun membership uh, access that you're getting as a result in the real world of being part of these digital civilizations. And those are creating conferences, you know, uh, not quite a metaverse yet, but who knows in the future with V Friends uh, and the, the v, what is it like the, the V Friends conference, I believe. Um, so there's conferences that are taking part in this, but it's also um, what I've seen in, in sustainable farming and agriculture. Uh, there's been some developments there as well as I'm, you know, I can't talk about it yet, but there is a project that is uh, in the incubator about space exploration. And so there's so many different um, areas in which real world civilizations are being improved and uh, more collaborative as a result of digital civilizations in metaverse. And that's primarily hot with games right now, gamers, esports. But I think in the future, it will be for everything from e-commerce, uh, shopping to, you know, uh, where to earn and fashion and all sorts of different types of uh, companies and industries coming into this. Um, you saw like the Beeple Louis Vuitton game that was super fun um, to collect those NFTs and these other kinds of retail experiences will sort of onboard more and more into this new world economy.
Thank you. Wow. I mean, you just touched upon so many interesting mm -hmm. um, topics that I would love to take a moment to, you know, dive into each of those individually. But why don't we start off with uh, gaming? Because in my mind, and correct me if I'm wrong here, but I really see the metaverse as the gamification of real life in a way. And so as we build and design these civilizations in this virtual world with those, you know, play to earn, where to earn, all these different gamified, you know, gambling, the ability to earn money, um, those integrations, uh, you know, I'd, I'd love to hear some of your guys' thoughts on that subject. I, I'll, can I start with this one? Yeah. Just because I was oh, just talking about it. Okay. Um, yeah, I love what it's, how transformational play to earn is in the Philippines, for example. Um, this is a, this is, this is huge for this nation because, um, you know, firsthand accounts, you can, you know, that starvation is a huge issue that the country faces and it's because of poverty. And so, you know, crypto has this potential to come in and provide universal basic income that could be completely transformational. Right now, the big trend in the Philippines, and this is why I'm such a you know, big supporter of Manny Pacquiao and his commitment to the country and how forward thinking he is with tech and everything. But uh, with the uh, play to earn taking off in the Philippines, um, Q Globe just opened an office there and we're super focused on, you know, trying to bring in uh, earning opportunities that create more of a sustainable income source. So in the US, maybe that kind of level of income would be great for a high school student to earn extra money, but in the Philippines, that could be three to four X what the current earning potential is for a lot of uh, families to, to live off of. And um, this is you know, a country that's plagued by, by poverty. And so I think that you know, just for the quality of life and the human condition, it's a way for them to connect internationally make friends for new opportunities and earning income, and then just simply play to earn to uh, earn for their families. Yeah, I think that's a really amazing point and very interesting there how, in a sense, engaging in the virtual world can actually enhance your real life and your real situation mm -hmm. there. So Joel, I'm curious what uh, your thoughts on it is. Yeah, I, I think it's in some ways too early to tell, you know, we're um, enthusiastic about the kind of play to earn communities and, and things that what we're doing as well. Um, because, you know, that, and like I said, it has a possibility, you know, the things to be a model for how we do things in the rest of society. So in our kind of metaverse design, whenever someone's creating a metaverse, you know, there's different component parts and then whoever has built them or contributed them to the kind of pool you know, basically can get a kind of automated dividends of the in-game currency um, by result of like the different assets that they've built. So, you know, people have talked about doing that for kind of a long time in different industries, but it's been a hard thing to kind of implement. Um, and again, also kind of run into regulatory barriers, but I'm pretty confident we'll be able to do that. And then it kind of illustrates that basically there's this whole new economy that can work out where you get not just the initial cash up front for what you've done, with the long tail of the proceeds distributed in an automated way and all that kind of stuff. Um, so I don't know, I couldn't be more excited about that. And, and also it lowers the barrier to entry as well. So, you know, it's some of the things you see in other platforms, you know, whether it's the Fivers or the 99 designs or whatever else it is, but you can have people all around the world that are just in an open marketplace and participating. And I think um, the web three is going to accelerate that, that trend considerably. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Love it. Right. Donnie, do you have any additional thoughts there? Absolutely. Um, speaking of new opportunities, speaking of, uh, first of all, this gamification for me, it just makes everything a bit more fun. So it's like you're working in, in a cutting edge with cutting edge technology, but at the same time, it's more fun. But taking it back to what we're creating, which, which I'm always so passionate about, what I see here is um, for example, for the architects who are creating new avenues for them to monetize their designs, because think about it, to be an architect, it takes for so long. I mean, it takes so many years in the university and then you need to get your accreditation just so you can get your food within, you know, one or to be established within a business. So it takes forever until you can 
get your name out until you can create for yourself. And now with this chance with NFTs and the metaverse, you have the chance to become a creator from day one. You start your university, you, you get the grips in how you design, for example, and then you, you could make your designs into NFTs. And at the same time, those NFTs can have the utility that they are 3D designs that can go into the metaverse and you can monetize them. And to even take it a step further, probably you can, I don't know, rent that design to somebody that they can use and you can mo even monetize it even more. So that idea that we're creating new avenues to monetize um, students from all over the world and from probably a student from a, a third world country, this will mean a lot more than from a student, I don't know, from our countries. I think that is really valuable for us. And I think that's what partly drives the team at Renovi as well, is that we're not creating this for the people that are already established only, but we're creating this for the people that are coming into this space, the younger, the students that are out there, that are, they're are interested in this. Um, and, and in a way, we're just, what is really interesting as well is that uh, you have these games, but you're involving somebody who was outside of the gaming industry for so long and then you're bringing them in. So you're bringing architects together with game developers and you put them together and they're creating something even better. So uh, these new avenues, these new, I don't know, uh, work relationships that we're creating is what drives us. Uh, and especially when we're helping younger students to monetize their designs is brilliant. And it's something that only with Web3 and the metaverse we could do. Yeah, and you know what? I think that passion that you have for ease of access and you know accessibility, community, that's something that I personally have found that is so widespread throughout the blockchain and the Web3 um, mm -hmm. industry and, and the space is that there really is that lowering of the barriers of entry, as Joel said earlier, in terms of getting into the space. I mean, that's the whole reason why we put on these educational conferences to really help integrate people, educate them, let them know, you know, what's happening in the space and how they can get involved. So I do encourage all of you guys mm -hmm. to uh, later on at the end of this chat, you know, share some links to get connected with you, um, some links to some current projects that you're working on. And maybe why don't you guys tell the audience maybe how they can start to get involved in, in some of the spaces that you guys are currently building. Mm -hmm. So look, I'll, I'll start first since I was already plugging Renovi. Look, uh, what I usually, what I'll say is we have this amazing competition for all the architects. So visit topmetaversebuild.com. Get your bearings around what we're building. If you're an architect, if you're a designer, come over, join our Discord, say hi. We're, we're, we're there. It's, it's us. Okay, it's me. I'm going to be texting. I'm going to be the moderator. So it's, it's not like uh, there's levels to who you're going to meet within the team. You're going to meet me. You're going to need me, uh, my friend, the CTO, you're going to meet everybody and you can get involved and design for the metaverse. Uh, and we want everybody who's unsure, everybody who has questions, we're there. Every one of us is always texting, replying, answering questions, or even helping with issues on Decentraland and Sandbox, uh, which is outside, let's say, the Renovi scope, which, which is what we're building, but we're just here to help everybody to build for the metaverse, whatever the metaverse might be. So that's what I'm going to plug in for today. <laughs> awesome. And uh, Sarah, how can the audience get involved in some of the projects that you're currently involved with? Um, yeah, definitely onboarding LPs. You can email me, sarahqglobe.com, or join the Discord, uh, join the community. You know, we're also super excited for uh, some IGOs coming up. So Definitely you wanna get involved with the Strongholder offering super uh, early still. And, you know, go, go over to OpenSea, pick up an MTG, uh, you know, come on over and, and join the Mighty Hercules Mastermind. Just get involved and figure out a way to contribute and it's gonna be big. Amazing, thank you so much. And Joel, how can the audience get involved in some of your current projects? Yeah, I recommend uh, following me on Twitter and, um, you know, kind of uh, when we release things, we're kind of starting to do our private alpha uh, beginning of next month. So there will be an opportunity for some people to engage. I occasionally 
uh, post puzzles and people who solve them get access to the kind of uh, the private version of what we're doing. Um, so yeah, that's a fun journey. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you so much. So I'm just kind of combing through the audience chat, um, looking for some questions. And I noticed someone made a comment on, or Sarah earlier made a comment about organizations, you know, coming onto the metaverse and how you think that it's going to be compulsory at a certain point. So one of the audience members asked if you could give us a couple use cases of that happening. I believe you're on. Uh, yeah, sure. Domino's Pizza sold a pizza <laughs> for quite a bit of money. I, I forget the price, but it was a lot uh, for a pizza. And, um, you know, Coca-Cola has created their uh, metaverse and there's a lot of brands building games. So we're just going to have to watch and see. You know, I think at this point it's a little exploratory and they're sort of testing the waters. But, you know, we'll see how it goes and um, continue to watch for great projects that are onboarding into the space, but also to keep it authentic and uh, keep it real to the ethos of Web3 and you know, too many advertisers and projects that might not be sustainable for the long run uh, won't be too investable from uh, Web3 investors. Yeah, and to, to just touch upon that, you know, I've, I've witnessed through my experience working in the space over the past couple of months is that so many different brands from traditional industries now, because of all of the hype surrounding the metaverse, we're seeing it happen with obviously social companies such as Facebook kind of getting involved in their toes in the water. But we're also seeing it happen within the fashion space, brands dropping their NFT lines and collections with NFT Basel, we provide NFT solutions for brands. So we've been working with hotel chains offering NFTs and perks and usability. So I think that the technology fundamentally um, is, is translatable to any industry. And as we watch the space continue to grow and push forwards, we're going to see more and more traditional industries kind of bleeding into the tech world, because in my mind, it's the inevitable progression of you know, the world, it's the world to the metaverse, right? Yeah, especially when it comes to luxury items, vintage items or unique goods that need the verification and proof of proof of authenticity. And so that can very much be part of um, not just metaverse e-commerce, but uh, metaverse uh, authentication. So, you, you know, to verify your, you know, your unique custom Lamborghini, you might have to join the, the Lambo metaverse to, you know, to verify that you have uh, purchased this unique car, um, like to, you know, maybe whatever you want to do with the pink slip, there are pink slips that there aren't, uh, there's a missing sort of verification level for unique vintage cars, Rolex watches, these kinds of uh, high value items, you know, I think that they're, these brands will get creative in how they um, deal with those, those kind of vintage items. They're already getting creative. They're not going to get, they're already getting really creative with how they deal with everything. So for sure, I mean, and they're jumping on board. I mean, I know Louis Vuitton is jumping on board. Dior, give me a brand. They're probably in the metaverse already. Um, I know really good companies like Tridium, they're already designing some of their really cool wearables. Uh, so they're already on board with the metaverse. It's a, it's a new way to experience everything. And to be honest, it's not about the luxury brands only. It's about everything. It's like if you have a following, if you have people that you need to connect to, then you need to find really interesting ways to connect with them. And even if you are Domino's and you're selling pizza, you're going to find a way to, to make an experience within the metaverse, right? And to make that experience fun for the people that are there, even if they cannot have digital pizza for dinner, right? <laughs> so... Uh, it's all about your community and how what you can give back to them uh, when you are within the metaverse. And if you're one of those brands that you can be within the metaverse e-commerce, then okay, fair enough. It's a it's a new avenue for you, a new more exciting avenue. What you can do with NFTs is brilliant. I mean, technically, it's digital ownership, so it proves that you can have ownership of everything. So. Uh, yeah, it's really cool. 
Awesome. Awesome. And I love your point there about experiences, you know, from all of the founders who I've spoken to really creating and, and building different projects within the space. I find a commonality between all of your goals is to enhance experiences. And when a lot of people, you know, coming to this conference and I've seen a lot of questions, you know, in the chat throughout the day of people saying, well, why would we want to replace a real world experience with the metaverse? And I honestly believe that the big misconception there is that the metaverse isn't trying to replace the real world experience, it's trying to enhance it. And because we do spend the majority of our lives online, as you were saying earlier, Adoni, mm -hmm. is that, you know, we already spend so much time and dedicate so much energy to our screen. So why not make that experience more immersive than just text and images, right? Well, yeah. Sorry, Joel, after you. The comparison, you know, from the early crypto community when kind of Ethereum came out, people were like, why do you need like a smart contract, DM, own language? Like, you know, the general sentiment, even within the already quite clued in Bitcoin, you know, community was quite skeptical um, that you needed something like that. But those of us who were, you know, whatever Ethereum native just kind of like got why smart contracts were important and what you could do with it and how it could open up these worlds. And now, you know, however many years later, people are really starting to get the message about DAOs and how they can be used. So, you know, I think it sometimes takes a while to get the word out, but the implications are really huge. And I think the same is true for the kind of metaverse language that we've been working on. Like, goes right into these things like one of the very first conversations we had is not just tracking like visual experiences and having coordinates so that you can map one location in a metaverse to a location different metaverse that's cool you know be able to go directly from your land and sandbox and through a portal to some land and some other metaverse and connect the dots very cool but then what if you start adding in a coordinate system that encompasses pheromones and encompasses other sensory data and fences that things that you know we can't you know normally experience and then we're actually starting to merge those into the, the kind of larger um, um, sort of stuff. So I think that's where it's going. I mean, I think people sometimes don't realize like really the scope of what metaverse can be. Uh, they just see like a website and they're like, oh, well, it looks like some pixels or whatever, you know, but mm -hmm. the actual things that are coming out. Uh, but I think it's it's a dec decade or more to reach some of those things, you know, much like Ethereum. And there will be multiple hype cycles and consolidation and stuff just like it's always been. So. Exactly. Yeah. And I think, Sally, you were perfect in, in saying that it, it's not about replacing, it's about enhancing, enhancing what, what we have. Uh, and that's what it needs to be the key takeaway. It's like we don't want to take real life away from anyone. and We don't want to shut anyone with goggles 24-7. Obviously, you're going to have some extremes. That always happens. But no, uh, it, it's about having a better experience in everything that you do. So we're already on our phones like this every single day, looking down. Now we have the chance to look up and have the information in our eyes. So they, they also say in a latest study that they say that at least a quarter of the population will be spending at least one hour within the metaverse by 2026, which is quite amazing if you ask me. So um, yeah, it's like, how much time do you spend on your phone? It's going to be the same thing. It's going to be the metaverse, but it's not going to be on your phone. It's going to be all around you. That's what the metaverse is going to be. Amazing. Amazing. And honestly, you guys bring up such fascinating points. Um, I wish that we could talk about this forever because there really are so many different directions that we could really dive into. But unfortunately, we only have a couple minutes remaining in this panel. I wanted to just close it off by saying you are all such visionaries in your own rights with everything that you've been building out and achieving in this space. So I would love to kick things or to end things off with uh, just a couple thoughts from you guys on how each of you respectively, um, what you're hoping to achieve in the future and what your personal goals are as you continue to build out and innovate this wonderfully fascinating space. Joel, do you wanna take it away? Yeah, I, I'm really excited about, like I said, the kind of core line of you know, bridging the world between the sort of ancient alien civilizations. What is it that we can explore? Let's like have our minds expand and basically put all the pieces together and kind of grand puzzles and games, you know, that basically make us 
more give us more access and hopefully make us kind of more intelligent as well so the future of education the future of you know things like sarah was talking about basic income which i think can you know is better and more likely to be done in a kind of web3 fashion than it has been so far by governments so i don't know i'm just very excited about where this is going awesome thank you sarah how about you I'm excited to disrupt old traditional business models that have been centralized and non-inclusive to minority populations. Uh, for example, Silicon Valley uh, and the distribution of wealth as well as access to venture capital. And that's what QGlobe aims to achieve through initial game offerings to finance and support, integrate, build out. Uh, these communities and vi virtual civilizations so that people can access uh, better income streams, access uh, jobs, uh, meet recruiters, network in this new era, and really improve their lives by being a first adopter. And to know that that is no longer centralized to Silicon Valley and anyone can be anywhere in the world and still be equally successful no matter what age you are or the color of your skin. Amazing, amazing. Thank you so much. And Adoni, why don't you uh, take things away? Yeah, for sure. So I guess my, my personal passion and the passion of the whole team, it's about Eric starting from the architects is about educating architects on what they can do within the nft space and the metaverse and then we take it a step further and we want to educate as many people uh in other areas that are involved renovi within into what the metaverse can be why it can actually pro become so much more for their businesses in other areas that are exploring and how it can help them actually promote their good job that are they're already doing uh, and to reach more people. So I, I guess we're in, a, uh, in a, we are in a pilgrimage to educate about the metaverse uh, to whoever, whomever we talk to. And I think we're really doing a good job in starting with the architects and then taking it further to everyone. Amazing, amazing. Well, thank you so much to each and every one of you and thank you to the audience for uh, joining us on the final panel of today's Metaverse Summit. It's been a pleasure hosting with you all and I'm mm -hmm. truly looking forward to seeing what all of you guys uh, accomplish in the future. So thank Thanks, you. Thanks everyone for tuning in. Thank you. Thanks. Bye. Bye.